bring in Robert Bianchi, who is a criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, and law and crime network host. Um, Robert, great to have you with us. What, what, what's your takeaway from the news conference that we just watched? This is the Schmidt family attorney, Gabby's mom, and her stepfather. Martha, I'm very concerned about the way this case has been handled from the beginning because one of the hallmarks as a former homicide prosecutor is I don't want too much information getting out into the public. And moreover, if I have a person of interest that is the boyfriend, I want that person to be talking to me. Mm -hmm. Usually those people are motivated to do that to show that I had nothing to do with the disappearance and or any foul play. So usually law enforcement has the ability to open up that dialogue. But when you have a private lawyer that is going out there and saying things like you own Owe us, you're obligated to, and the police are saying that you're a person of interest. Any credible defense lawyer would tell the client not to speak to law enforcement because anything they say could be used against them, whether they're innocent or they're guilty. So, a, a, an avenue, a significant and important avenue, that is the person who was with her last, the person that was with her during this trip, how he got into the vehicle, where they were last, and all of those things would have been highly relevant. But in the environment that was created by this lawyer, and now being identified as a person of interest, it's very likely they're never going to get crucial information. So, as a former prosecutor that would have to get out and talk to the public about these kind of cases, I would now have to turn to the public to say, we need your assistance for any information that you may have. Because, Martha, just last point, keeping in mind that even if you prove, God forbid, it turns out that she's no longer alive, the prosecutors still have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt who did it, and that it was not an accident, a medical event, suicide, or a third party that may have been responsible for it. So I don't like the way it's been developing in yeah. my mind. I mean, it's clear that something bad happened, uh, because if, if it didn't, um, he could have easily said, you know, we broke up, we had a big fight, she told me she wanted to stay there, I moved on, she would call her parents, they would have conversations about all of this. There's a, a million scenarios that you can imagine um, where this, this could have sorted out with a lot more communication going on. I, I think it's interesting that there's this last text message, um, August 30th, I believe, I'm correct on that, that, that said, no service in Yosemite, according to the reports. It was five days earlier that Gabby's mom said she last communicated with her. Then five days go by and your daughter texts you with this sort of cryptic, you know, not, no more information, no service in Yosemite. They believe, her family believes that that, was, that message was not from her. What can you tell us about that very small piece of evidence and the, the, the phone trail and how this might all come together? What would you be looking for? Absolutely, Martha. Phones, phones, phones. Yeah. Uh, that They're going to be going through all of that and financial records, ATM cards, withdrawals. But the phones are key because with the cell phone tower data that they're going to be getting, that I'm sure they already have from the company, they're going to be able to geospatially map both her phone and his phone. So they're going to want to see where that message came from. It obviously is a cryptic message. It is the last, I believe, one of the last messages, if not the last message that was given. So that is going to be a highly relevant piece of evidence that law enforcement is going to look at. It, look into and there are ways and I won't describe them that law enforcement using both federal assets and state assets and I know the FBI is involved in this have very sophisticated abilities to be able to track uh, what cell phones are doing and who is the person that is behind the cell phone doing it so uh, you can be assured at this point in time especially since they've lost communication with the person of interest which again I, I think is just a major unforced error here yeah. they're gonna have to go on the forensic data like the phones yeah it is interesting how quickly he shut down though you know you know, when you talk about uh, other cases that were similar in some ways, and as you say, we have no idea what Gabby's status is at this point, um, but I think of, you know, Scott Peterson, you think of other people who got very involved in the search uh, and who swore mm -hmm. up and down that they were innocent from the beginning. But his attorney says, they, you know, we've, we've seen that. So we are not letting him say anything at this point. If you were representing him, what would you be doing? I uh, absolutely would never be giving him, uh, letting him give an interview. Uh, you know, the, the United States uh, Supreme Court decision on the Fifth Amendment says it's there to protect the innocent as well as the guilty. And I can give you firsthand experience on cases very similar to this, where my detectives were prepared to make an arrest of the quote unquote usual suspect, the husband going through a very bad divorce, and or well, the evidence kind of pointed towards that individual. And that person said, you know, I know that I want to kind of help, but by the same token, I know that I'm going to be a person of interest. I remember one in particular was very insightful. To 
this way. And he said, I, I just don't want to go forward with it. And everyone went and jumped to the conclusion on multiple cases, not only one, that, oh, that has to be the person to do it. He's asserting his right to remain silent. And in every one of those cases that I'm referring to, it turned out that wasn't, wasn't. the person yeah. who did it. So we have to be obviously open to, um, to that possibility here. We're open to all of the possibilities that they play. I thought it was very interesting in this letter, which basically is a plea, one family to the other. We all know each other. Please, please help us. Uh, one of the lines is if you have any shred of decency left. Uh, so yeah. obviously there's a huge rupture between these families. Last question, Robert, can, can he be compelled to come down and answer questions? Can they see he's a person of interest. So why can't they just physically bring him in and say, we need to, you need to answer these questions? Yeah, well, because you have a Fifth Amendment right to remain silent, and they can't bring you down unless they have probable cause to believe that you're guilty of a crime. Right now, they don't have a body. They don't know whether or not she's alive or she's not alive. If she's not, they don't know the circumstances of the death. So based on the Constitution of this country, they can't just force you to come down to the police headquarters and give a statement, Martha. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, you know, where's her phone uh, is one big question. Uh, obviously, these are young people who are on social media constantly, constantly with their phones. Um, where is her phone is obviously one of the big questions that they need to figure out right now, and maybe that will lead them to her. Thank you very much, Robert. Good to see you today. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Martha. Sure. So here's another...